begin by butting the red sealant against the installed tubes. Now, using a light tension, wrap the sealant around the cable semicon until it is level with the red insulating tube. If you are using a drain wire, unishield, or concentric neutral cable, you now need to install an aluminum deflector onto the cable semicon. To do so, simply remove the backing from the deflector and wrap it around the semicon at the edge of the red sealant. The next layer of the splice is a dual wall black and red tube with raised ridges running the length of the tube. The red inner portion of the tube is insulating while the outer black portion is conductive. Because of its size and composition, this tube will take longer to shrink than the previous tubes. If the red tube has cooled, Heat it as necessary before centering the dual wall tube over the joint. Next, apply the torch to the center of the tube as in the previous steps. Again, be sure to heat the entire circumference of the tube. Once the center of the tube begins to shrink, gently twist the end. A slight resistance indicates that the center is adequately shrunk. You may now start to work the torch to one end of the tube. Continue to move the torch in a brush-like fashion around the entire circumference of the tube. Stop shrinking when you are four inches from the end of the tube. Now return to the center and shrink the other end of the tube. Again, stop four inches from the end. Return to the first end and shrink the final four inches. Then go back to the unfinished end and complete the shrinking of the tube. In some instances, the dual wall tube may not shrink down to the cable semicon even when correctly installed. Finally, post heat the entire tube for an additional minute. Inspect the tube both visually and by touch to ensure that the ridges have disappeared. If they are still present, continue heating the tube until it is smooth. If you are using drain wire, unishield, or concentric neutral cables, you should now remove the aluminum deflector. It is all right if some of the deflector remains under the black and red tube. There are four different methods for connecting the ground braid, depending on which type of cable you are installing. For more detailed information on these methods, please refer to the installation instructions. On metallic tape shielded cable, begin by fanning out the end of the ground braid. Then attach it to the metallic shield using the spring clamp. For drain wire or unishield cable, first pigtail the shield wires together. Then crimp the ground braid onto the pigtail with the connector included in the splice kit. For concentric neutral cable, simply crimp the ground wires together using an appropriate connector. For lead sheath cable, the ground braid is soldered onto the lead sheath. Next, wrap a layer of half-lapped shielding mesh over the entire splice and tie it off. Shielding mesh is not required for concentric neutral cables. For jacketed cables, you should now prepare the cable for the wraparound sleeve. Prior to installing the MBSM wraparound sleeve, 
Properly clean and abrade all cable jackets for approximately 6 inches with an approved solvent. Remove or tape over any sharp points to prevent puncture of the wraparound. Apply sealant at the jacket cutback as directed in the specific installation instructions. The location and amount will differ with each kit. This helps to ensure a watertight seal. Remove the backing from the wraparound sealing sleeve and center the sleeve over the splice. Slide the retention clip onto the butt rails. Slide the channels toward the center from each end of the sleeve and over the retention clip. A minimum of one half inch should be extended beyond the edges of the sleeve. If the channel fit is tight, push the sleeve up from the bottom and down from the top while sliding on the channel. This causes the rails to flatten together and prevents the channels from binding during installation. Check to make sure the flap is not pinched between the rails. Now you are ready to start shrinking. First, evenly preheat along both sides of the rail channel area until this area begins to shrink. To achieve uniform heating, move the flame back and forth from one side of the channel to the other while moving the flame along the entire length of the channel, as demonstrated here, until the sleeve starts to shrink. Preheating is complete when the sleeve begins to shrink. This technique will help to assure a properly preheated rail and channel area. Next, start at the center of the sleeve and work toward each end, completely shrinking the sleeve as you move. Apply heat until the sleeve is fully shrunk and the heat-sensitive green paint is completely converted to black. Continue heating the rail channel area for another 5 seconds per foot. A white line should be visible in the channel gaps, indicating sufficient heating. Be sure to allow the splice to cool before moving or placing in service. By following the written installation instructions and the information contained in this video, you can install a durable, watertight splice.